Hey guys, welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Growing up on the Tuesday. So many of you guys are complaining about my background and said that you missed being able to see Bernie on my bed. Don't worry, I have this extra chair back here so any of the pets can chill if they want to in the background. So today for Talk Tuesday, I wanted to talk about a very recent murder case that has been extremely popular, discussed on social media. I have had it requested literally hundreds of times. The case that we're discussing today is the case of Kanika Jenkins, who actually passed away probably sometime on September 9th. So I'm gonna cut right to it. And I just want you guys to keep in mind that this is a very new case. There's barely any information out there other than the extreme amounts of fake things that there are on this case on the internet. Please, with this case and all cases, do not believe something you see as a meme on Instagram. Do not believe something you've just seen retweeted a bunch of times, what must be true. There is so much misinformation out there on this case. It truly blows my mind and it took me even longer to go through it all because just the amount of it and verifying whether or not it was true. But do keep in mind that since this is a new case, I don't have tons of information. Not all of the information is out there, including an autopsy and toxicology report, which is going to tell us a lot. So that's why I just want to do this as a casual talk Tuesday and just sort of talk about the case and my thoughts on it. And maybe I'll make an update video when we actually get some more information. So Kanika Jenkins was a 19 year old woman um, who attended a party at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Chicago. The party was on a Friday night, September 8th, and she went missing sometime on the early mornings of Saturday the 9th and um, early hours of Sunday the 10th, Kanika was found, her body was found in a freezer in a vacant area of the hotel, an area that was, I guess, under construction. It was a kitchen that was not in use at the time. And I've seen so many things out there about this, um, including the Daily Mail, I tweeted this, but look what they said. They literally called her freezer team instead of Kanika. Like, the lack of respect just truly baffles me. But let's go back and talk through about the whole thing and how it went down with the information that we have so far. Kanika graduated from the Community Christian Alternative Academy and actually just gotten a job at a nursing home and was out celebrating with friends. Now, Kanika did not tell her mom where she was going as most teens who have hotel parties do not tell their parents where they're going. Um, for obvious reasons. Um, oftentimes when people have parties in hotels, they are booked by older people and that's exactly what happened in this case. And they actually used a fake credit card to book the room. Kanika told her mom that she was going, I think bowling into a movie, definitely not to a hotel party. Uh, so she lied to her mom. She took her mom's car and she was with a group of her friends and they went and they left her house around, I think 11.30 Friday night and went to this party at the Crown Plaza. We live in the age of social media where everyone loves to document everything they do, occasions, parties. There's a lot of footage um, just from the party that night that people were just filming just for fun. <laughs> There are tons of people online who have gone through this footage, slowed down parts of it, and swear that they can hear her saying, help me at some point, and someone talking about pills, and it's very, very sketchy because I've listened to all this stuff. I don't hear anything that is solid at all. Like, um, definitely some questionable stuff, but I definitely didn't, sorry, I think I had cat hair on my lip. <laughs> I don't think there's anything very solid in the clips of them partying. It just looks like they're partying. In fact, at one point, a guy, one of the guys mentions a gang, a girl throws up a gang symbol. So that just shows you the type of people that they're hanging out with. Oh, bitty. Oh, yeah. Turn that, turn that pappy ring tone off. 
So obviously there was drinking involved in this party. There are not toxicology reports released yet. They will be coming soon. And like I said, that's going to bust this thing wide open. That's gonna tell us a lot, hopefully. But if we can get an idea of how much Kanika drank or if she had done any other drugs, um, maybe marijuana in combination with it or had been given any type of date rape drug, we will be able to know all of that once these toxicology reports come back. One thing that you should know before we go any further is that the timeline from this night is like impossible to put together. There are literally multiple timestamps on hotel footage. The hotel front desk has said different times than the police have. CNN is reported differently than the Chicago Tribune has. So I definitely do not know the exact time frame. These are sort of estimates or what I've <laughs> tried to gather. So yeah, they're in a hotel. There's tons of cameras in hotels and some of that surveillance has been released and in one of the clips which either is around 2 15 or 1 15 i can't seem to get a final answer on any of these times kanika is seen with her friends walking through the lobby area of the hotel you can see her in it and she looks fine she looks completely steady stable no one's helping her this isn't someone who looks like extremely inebriated by any means and it seems like most places are reporting that this was around 1 15 in the morning and according to her friends they realized that she had left her phone and keys up in the room so they went to go get them. Them. So they left her in the hallway alone. And the first rule of drinking girls out there, you never leave someone by themselves, ever. You always stay with friends, you need a buddy system. At least one girl should have stayed with her. That was a huge mistake. Nika also had a phone call with her sister at 1.30. If she wasn't that fucked up, but she didn't look like she was that bad, and if she was okay to the point where they thought they could just leave her out there, then why didn't she just come with them to get her stuff? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to me. But then the footage jumps um, if forward like an hour. And it's either, like I said, it's such a wacky timeline here. Some sources are reporting that this happened around 3.25 a.m. Some have said 2.25 a.m. I don't know. At some point, all of a sudden, Kanika is seen stumbling out of an elevator, clearly like inebriated very, very drunk. And maybe she wasn't just drunk. She could have also been drugged or a combination, like I said. And she is alone at this point. And that area of the hotel was completely vacant, under construction. It was going to be something eventually, but no one was there. It's not a place for guests to just hang out. So it's odd that she just ended up there and no one saw her go down there. But she ends up in this hallway. And clearly, she is under the influence of something. I mean, she's stumbling. There's points where she literally almost falls. To me, it looks like she's looking for something. She's looking for possibly a place to go to the bathroom, or maybe she was trying to find an area to smoke. I mean, no one really knows. So in the meantime, her friends could not find her. Um, they started to get panicked, and they left the hotel in her car, uh, which is odd that they vacated the scene, but it's possible that they just didn't want to get caught by their parents for being there. Maybe none of them were supposed to be there. And around 4.30 a.m., they called her mom, uh, Kanika's mom, and said, we can't find her. She was at this party with us. We were all drinking. She only had one cup. She told them that. Her yep. friend called me at 4.34 in the morning and stated to me that she was missing. Okay. I mean, they couldn't find her. She had been lost for like two hours. And her mom literally got up and went straight to the hotel around 5 a.m. to search for her herself. And when she went to the hotel, she asked them, she told them what was going on. And they said they cannot start reviewing footage or do anything regarding to finding her or sending out like a memo or anything until they have police in on it, until a missing persons case has been filed. So Kanika's mom called 911 and this is the 911 call. 911, where's the address of your emergency? Yes, I'm at the Crown, uh, Crown Plaza. And I was calling because my daughter came to this par to a party here last night, a gathering with her friends. And um, now her friends, they said that they left on the front of the hotel and she's not able to be found now. She's 19 years old. And they said that they, um, when her friends was acting uh, earlier today, like about four o'clock in the morning, because uh, they used to run the video cameras, they said that they didn't have no camera. But now I came and it was a lady, she said that if she, if she heard music and she, she asked me that I want to go upstairs and we went upstairs on the 11th floor and it was someone came to the room and the, she said that she did see my daughter there with a group of girls and, and, and a couple of guys. But um, that's how she just saw because she was trying, busy trying to get reception on her phone. All right, well then, um, you know what? Um, are you sure you don't mean the Crown Plaza in Rosemont? Yes, the Crown. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, the Crown Plaza in Rosemont. That's exactly where it's at. Do you think it's possible maybe she went to one of her friends' houses or, 
you know, she's probably... Nope. No, actually, because she had my car. She was driving my car. She know I don't like nobody to drive my car because my insurance will not pay for nobody, no one besides her. And um, her friends kept calling my phone. I told them to stay out here. They stayed out here, but they called me like about three time in the morning. I was laying in the bed. I just had breast surgery. I breast, you know, I, I fought I beat, breast cancer. So I'm, you know, sedated off medication early. And they telling me she out here. So once I rejuvenated, strength enough for myself enough to get up and drive out here to look for her. Once they brought me my car, I came right out here. And what's really unfortunate is the dispatcher told her that she should wait some time and make sure she's actually missing before filing a missing persons case. Now, I'm about to tell you guys something that you definitely should remember. You do not need to wait any amount of time to file a missing persons report. Sometimes the police can be difficult about it, but if you push them and you go straight to the top, you can get it filed, absolutely. There's no rules anywhere in any police department that says you have to wait 24 hours, 12 hours, 48 hours, whatever it is, it's just completely made up. It was really unfortunate that they told her that. I'm sure she just assumed that that's, you know, the police aren't very helpful, especially for people of color. So I'm sure she figured, you know what, whatever, and I'm better off just like going and trying to find her myself than dealing with you guys. So they didn't get a missing persons report filed until the next day. And then they started going through the security tapes. And, and it's like, it's so sad because a lot of this could be prevented if they had looked earlier. If like when she showed up there right at five, if they started looking at surveillance, she could be alive right now. When they started looking at the footage, they obviously saw the clips of her walking with her friends. They saw her walking out of the elevator into that vacant area. But they also saw this, and this has been released, is clips of Kanika walking into a vacant kitchen. Just to let you guys know, there are so many doctored versions of this on the, online. Do not believe any of them. This footage that I'm putting in is the actual real footage. Um, I've seen fake stuff where there's literally men like dubbed into it. I think there's a lot of people out there trying to get in on the Kanika Jenkins case, you know, like right when it came out. That's why I didn't talk about this. I wanted to wait at least a week and like kind of figure everything out and really get the facts because so many people are out there just trying to be sensational and shocking and maybe get some followers out of it. So I've literally seen clips where there's like a man in the kitchen with her and that's not true. I've seen fake shadows. I did notice that there's reflections of Kanika walking in the appliances because they're all stainless steel, but definitely not another person. It shows her stumbling through the kitchen and everything, but it does not show her getting inside of the hotel freezer. This is when they needed to go look in that area and as soon as they did, they opened the freezer and unfortunately found Kanika in it died of probably hypothermia. They haven't released the autopsy or the condition of her body. We don't know if she looked like she had been bruised or messed with. We don't know if she had clothes on. We don't know anything, um, but they just found her in there alone. Once the missing persons report was filed though, the hotel actually started cooperating. They actually told people in the hotel to look out for her. They did a full search of the hotel. And this reminds me a lot of Alyssa Lamb and Amy Bradley with hotels or cruise ships not wanting to act because they don't want to, they just assume that maybe there's something else going on and they're very slow in these situations to, you know, act upon them. And in this case is a prime example of why they should have looked immediately. But when her body was found on Sunday morning, Morning. Um, her mom was hysterical. They, any, the hotel is so open, so my brother walked past. You know, remind you, we didn't know this was a crime scene at four o'clock in the morning. Right. Once the, after they declared she was dead, when I start asking, can I see my baby body? When I asked the sergeant for his badge number, then he said, I got to talk to the more. I said, can I see how my baby laying down? That you know how, how she feel, how she died. Yeah. And they wouldn't let me see my baby. I told us she they was dead at one something. But they didn't let me see her body until so four hours later. Once, they, had, they did let me see. They wouldn't. They would. They refused my mother. They refused my family to see her. They said you only you and your daughter can see it, and you can't take pictures because this is a crime scene. And this is free. This, this is in a deep freezer. But they had at this time they had let the morgue take her, move her, on defrost the freezer. Right. Her hair had soaking water up on it. Yeah. They she defrost. She was defrosting the freezer. They defrost the whole freezer when they discovered nobody we wasn't even allowed to stand in the hotel lobby they put us out we had to stand outside and look we we studied trying begging for help begging for help the police department couldn't even help us after they found my baby dead they couldn't even help us the 
bastards! They couldn't even help us. Now, the craziest thing about this is her body was found in the freezer, so she, we know she somehow got in this freezer. And I've, I've listened to so many people talk about freezers and their experience with freezers um, just from looking into this case. And there's a lot of people, you can definitely lock yourself in a fr freezer. That's absolutely true. However, in pretty much all freezers, there's a, an emergency button on the inside. It's not like old fashioned, oh crap, I was putting away the ice cream and then the door shut. There's a button, normally it's a glowing button, actually glow in the dark button, um, but it could be a little small and hard to find. And Kanika looks clearly intoxicated. Now, it also would be hard for her to pull the freezer door open. And if she thought it was some type of, I thought maybe she thought it was an exit, like a, you know, how um, doors like to the outdoors like have, you know, those like bars on it. Maybe she felt the bar on the freezer and pushed through and somehow got confused and opened it and walked inside. And maybe she was so intoxicated that she passed out, fell asleep and got hypothermia. Um, maybe it's possible that she couldn't find the button or she was trying to get out and couldn't and eventually just succumbed to hypothermia as well. Or did someone put her in there? And this is when the internet just went wild with rumors of what really happened in the freezer. There were literally actual posts online where people were sharing these over and over again that were accusing her friends of setting this up and selling Kanika for $200 and she was put in the hotel freezer so her organs can be sold in the black market. Now, when we get the autopsy results back, we can see if her organs are still intact. I believe we haven't heard anything else from police and they definitely think she just walked in there. I think they're gonna come back and say, her body was completely normal. Um, I personally really think this could have been a case of her just being lost and confused, clearly heavily intoxicated, got into that freezer and could not figure out how to get out. And it just breaks my heart to know that if that's really the case and she was alive in the freezer for some time, that maybe, and it doesn't take much to kill someone in an industrial freezer. Like these freezers are way colder than your like fridge at home. They're, but since her mom was so responsive and on top of it, like she got there at 5 a.m and was trying to look for her daughter. If the hotel had cooperated with her, it's possible they would have just found her and let her out and she'd still be alive. It's just hard to think that the hotel just did not have any action. Like they could have called the police as well. From my perspective, I definitely think this is not just a complete case of like a girl get drunk a girl got drunk and walked into a freezer. I mean, she had to drink a lot to get to where she was at and she was really messed up. I have known people that have gotten roofied in like bars up in college and thank God nothing happened to any of the people I knew, but you are like completely gone. It is very intense to be under the influence of the date rape drug or GHB or anything. So that's really where my gut is leaning is I don't think this is just, okay, whatever, Kanika, walked into a freezer. I think people really need to look at what was in her system, who could have possibly roofied her, and those individuals will need to be uh, you know, held accountable and investigated. The police are running an investigation, obviously. They brought in all the people from the party, and there's just tons of information that we just don't know yet. All of their cameras um, were motion sensor like activated, so it's just odd. Like They only turned on when she came into the frame. And there is a guy named Andrew Holmes who is working with the family as a, he's a community activist. At one point he said he was representing the family, so I don't really know exactly what he's doing, but he on video explained that he saw the hotel footage, he saw footage of Kanika walking into the freezer drunk. Now, no one else has seen this footage, and I don't know if he meant it like I saw her in the kitchen drunk, but I have not seen a video and I cannot find a video anywhere of her actually walking to the freezer and the door closing behind her. That's what's sketchy to me. And if the police have that, I don't know if they even have that. If they do, that absolutely needs to be released because that would put a lot of the rumors and stuff to rest. Most of the stuff out there, most of the internet rumors and videos and all these claiming things can be debunked really easily by just doing a little more research or finding the original source. I mean, there are people that literally think Think that the whole thing was staged, that it's not Kanika because she's too curvy to be Kanika. But I'd like people to keep in mind that uh, these cameras that they have, they are like required to have them in hotels and stuff. And they're not always the nicest cameras. A lot of the time they stretch the footage a lot. And to me, it definitely looks like the footage has just been stretched because she does look wider in this uh, picture, but 
it's, it's also like they pick the worst possible angle and lighting to compare. I think this is just a case, a tragic case, that definitely could have some foul play involved with possibly, you know, drugging people. It's a tragic case that I think people are just trying to make sense out of and coming up with all these ideas and rumors and accusing people does not help anyone. I've seriously looked at all the videos, I've looked at enhancements, I've listened to different audio sped up in different ways and just nothing holds water for me, literally nothing. It really makes sense to me that she just sadly ended up in this freezer, was confused and intoxicated, possibly drugged, and ended up in the freezer and couldn't get out. I highly encourage people who are involved in this case or have been posting about this case to stop making accusations on social media. If you have any real evidence, why don't you report it to the police? Spreading false information and rumors um, is terrible and makes the case so much harder and really fogs up everything for the family. So I think people definitely need to be more cautious about where they're getting their information from because the amount of fake information people have sent me like truly blew my mind. So when the toxicology and autopsy reports come back, I will leave that information below. Please, in the comments, be sure to be careful about what you speculate about, what information you believe, because I'm sure there'll be even more fake stuff in the comments. We really gotta stick to the facts here and what we know and what we've seen. And from what I've seen, everything just points to a just a tragedy. It's a really, really sad case. I feel so badly for her family and her mother. Her mother and her were very close. And I feel sorry for her, you know? 19 is really young to pass away. So yeah, I wish I had some more information for you guys. This has literally only been like a week or so. So I tried my best to put together as much of the puzzle as I can. And there's still a lot of missing pieces that hopefully will be coming out in the next few weeks. But that's it for me today, guys. I will talk to you next time. Bye.